chances are if I open up your refrigerator, I'm going to see a tub of gochujang that's been used once or twice for a spicy like barbecue dish. And then the other five months, it's been sitting in the back of your refrigerator. Now it's painful to throw food away. So today I'm going to show you how to make use of that gochujang paste. We're going to turn it into a delicious, spicy, savory. Let's start by grabbing your gochujang. Mine was in the back, but uh, I'm gonna grab it now. This recipe was originally by Chef Baek Jung Won. It's been a while since we did one of his recipes and, and this one is good. For those who don't know, gochujang is fermented chili paste. It's made from Korean red chili peppers. We're gonna grab four tablespoons worth. All right. With four spoons, I can already see some light at the end of this little tub. Good. Now you may have opened your tub of gochujang and you'll see it's darker in color than when you first got it. That's totally fine. You know this gochujang paste is continuously fermenting and so it will take on some more color. You can give it a little taste. Gochujang is spicy but it has this earthy uh, slight back taste. It's like uh, in a song it's the bass. Doom, doom, doom. And then we're going to use a good mix of vegetables. You know this is Korean stew so we always got to have our good vegetables in here. Let's start with two stalks of spring onion. This should be the length of my forearm each. Notice here we're using the white portion. We'll cut these very thin, followed by half an onion. And we want to get these guys pretty thin. Right. Onions are done, nice and skinny. Then we're going to use one potato. You can just cut this in half first. Cut these relatively thin, about a width like this. If you cut them too thick, It'll take too long for them to boil and all the other vegetables will wimp down. And of course with some potatoes, we got to have some protein. I'm going to use some steak. If you don't want to go with beef, you can also go with pork. Pork always works beautifully with spicy Korean stews. You can throw in some samgyeopsal, which is those thinly sliced pork belly. Alright guys, key thing here, I'm going to just cut this into small bite-sized pieces. I would recommend 150 or 200 grams of whatever protein you choose. Uh, I'm using oyster mushrooms in Korea. This is called nutari bazot. Just one handful and then just break these guys up. Break some of the larger trumpets in half. Ba -ba -da -ba. And then I do have some leftover shiitake mushrooms. So I'm going to get rid of this one as well. You can use either one or use both. Up to you. Get them thinly sliced. And then finally, we're going to add two Cheongyang chili peppers. Now you might be asking, Daniel, we're going to already be adding gochujang and then the chili flakes, the gochugar as well. We need to add more spice. Well, this offers like this fresh uplifting spice. I mean, if you look at a cupcake, you add the powdered sugar at the end, right? You get my drift? I think adding these chili peppers are a must. So if you can't find these in your area, work with one jalapeno and get them very thinly sliced like this. Good. Now look at this beautiful array of vegetables and potatoes and meat. Let's get cooking. All right, first things first, get a large wok or a large pot out. Two tablespoons of cooking oil. I'm using vegetable oil. We always use some sort of neutral oil in Korea, not olive oil. It's too strong. It overflavors everything. That's two tablespoons. Then we're going to add in two tablespoons of sesame oil. And we're going to put this on a low heat. That looks about good. All right, and then once it gets hot, do you remember when we made jajangmyeon, we had that black paste called chunjang and we fried it in oil to flavor it? We're going to do the same thing for our gochujang now. All right, and now you see it going, it's dancing in the oil. Remember, this should be on low heat or else you're going to burn your gochujang and you're going to cry and then you're going to blame me. Once it starts to bubble and fizz up like this, we're going to add in one tablespoon of gochugaru. That's the Korean red chili pepper flakes. All right, now give it a nice stir in. And then immediately we're going to add in some water. Two and a half cups of water. We're forcing the chili oil and the water to become one. That's going to provide the base for our soup. Now of course you can raise the heat to about a medium high. Let's get our potatoes in. As well as our pieces of beef or steak. And I'm going to just show you a closer. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't. We're going to add a little bit more aromatics to get this really flavorful. Let's get two tablespoons of minced garlic. That's one. And number two. 
And thus far, we haven't added any salt or seasoning. Two tablespoons of soup soy sauce. If you don't got soup soy sauce, it's okay. Just use regular soy sauce. And then we're gonna do one tablespoon of fish sauce. I'm using Korean anchovy sauce, but you can just use any regular fish sauce. No problem. Then give it a good 5-10 minutes to boil. We want that fish sauce smell to cook away and the potatoes to start getting soft. All right, and the potatoes, they look like they're getting soft. Let's add in our onions. This is gonna add some sweetness. Then our mushrooms, along with our green chili peppers. Oh man, this is already looking delicious. All right, and then let's continue to let it boil so that the vegetables can release some water and flavor the soup as well. I'm gonna stir it around so all that flavor can get mixed together. Give it another five to 10 minutes after you throw in all the veggies. All right, and after you get it around five, eight minutes, we're gonna add in our spring onions. Then at the end, we're gonna crack some black pepper. We're gonna do around eight cracks. Mix that around. And then let me give a taste of the soup. It's slightly salty, so I'm gonna add a dash of water. Okay, put this back on the flame. I'm gonna give it a little taste. Wow, that's perfect. Oh, the flavor is perfect now. Caveat, this soup is pretty spicy. So if you can't do spicy, there's no need for you to do this recipe, all right? If you can, this would be perfect with some rice and some makgeolli on the side. Oh, it's wonderful. Load it up. There it is, we went from that to this and now i have to say this one is one of the more spicier stews that we've made so if you're not familiar with korean spice i might say skip this one but if you're down with that gochujang flavor and you know that heat all you need is a little bit of fresh rice on the side so how do you eat this no don't dig in like a bowl of chili you'll die grab a little bit of the toppings you put it over some of this rice dip it into the stew and bon appetit mm. Oh, it's so good guys. I mean, this is just the perfect way to get rid of gochujang. <laughs> and one thing, when you sample this soup when it's boiling hot, all of the flavors taste really sharp, maybe a little bit salty. But if you give it five minutes, all the flavors, they come back together to the lunch table and they don't fight anymore. They're talking, um, a little bit harmonious and uh, very well balanced. <laughs> Trying to cool down. You know, a small reflection here, when I was living in Tokyo and someone bumps into you in the street, it's sumimasen and very polite. In Korea, if you bump into someone, they'll also give you a 죄송합니다, which means I'm sorry, but it's gonna be followed by a quick, nasty stare. It comes from all the spicy food we eat. It fuels us. Mm -hmm. 